the Timex Expedition Scout. This is a new model from Timex which basically answers a question I've had ever since I posted a review on this watch, the Timex Weekender. Now, the Weekender is a great watch, still very popular, and it does a lot of things right. But one question I'm very frequently asked about is the size. It's 38 millimeters. And coupled with its thin lugs and simple round case shape, it is somewhat small on the wrist. In fact, Timex marks this watch as a unisex model. So sometimes people looking for similar heritage styling are looking for something a little bigger. Uh, and this watch, the Expedition Scout, is that watch. In general, I've recommended the Expedition line to people looking for an affordable everyday watch because they are durable and they are well designed, but this Scout model really is an outstanding example in my opinion. And in this review, I'm going to be getting into depth about the design and interesting provenance of this watch. Timex has carefully called this expedition model the Scout model, which I think brings us directly to a conversation about the provenance or lineage of this watch. Now, the expedition line has been around since 1996, and the whole line has been based off of field watches. Now, field watches, of course, are a military style that go back to really the Second World War when you had issued watches that were contracted through the military. Now, the Timex J. Crew watch has been the closest thing to a thoroughgoing field watch, which Timex actually claims is uh, from a military style in the 1940s, but that particular claim has been somewhat refuted by the whole Dinky blog. As a matter of fact, Timex's first authentic military watches were issued in 1982. It was a very short production run, and those watches resembled closely the, the Benrus watches, which are military spec watches from the 70s. The current successor in Timex's line to that watch is actually the Timex Camper at a diminutive 34 millimeters. All this is to say that the Timex Scout bears very much in common with previous field watch design, but it isn't directly inspired from any one Timex of the past. Now, the Scout name is also a hat tip to the fact that in the 50s, Timex made watches for the Scouts, and there are still vintage models that are collected these days of a very similar design, although they usually don't have military time in set on the dial. So let's take some time looking at this nicely cohesive dial design. You don't have any kind of chapter ring on this watch's face. It just goes directly to a seconds track which borders around the dial directly with the case. The inside of the case under the glass is polished and so you get reflection of that track sometimes in the case itself. Then you've got prominent hour Arabics with smaller military Arabics. Timex Expedition logo, of course, underneath the 12 o'clock marker, and then the indigo light function along with the water resistance underneath. I also shouldn't fail to mention that the date window aperture is very nicely integrated into the 24-hour military time. The hand shape is described as a sword hand shape with a needle tip and of course the second hand is an arrow shape. Now all of this is extremely similar to another very popular field watch which is the Hamilton Khaki, arguably the quintessential field watch and these watches look remarkably similar. In fact you could argue that the expedition is just aping one of the variations of the Hamilton Khaki's design. Now the Khaki does actually have serious military provenance and is directly inspired from Hamilton models that were issued for decades as uh, mechanical military field watches. So uh, interestingly enough I do think these watches merit some close comparison so I'm going to be doing a separate video comparing this $30 Timex to this $300 Hamilton but I want to return to the expedition and talk about specifications a little bit more. You'll notice that the case back says that it's made of stainless steel, but it only says that the case back is made of steel. Now that's interesting because the rest of the case is actually made of brass and is plated in such a way that it appears to be a brushed stainless steel. This is really remarkable if you think about it. When I first saw this watch, I thought, wow, what a nice satin 
brushed finish. They must be using a stainless steel case. But upon closer examination, what you actually see is that they've stamped in somehow on the coating a brushed appearance. It's very clever and actually looks surprisingly good to the eye at about arm's length. If you start looking at it closely, it does look pretty cheap. Now, this plated finish is something that over time could chip, but it hasn't been a problem on the watches that I've owned. One huge improvement over the Weekender is the prominent crown. This is a large toothy crown that is similarly plated to the case. It is prominent and does seat in the case, but overall it feels oversized and is very easy to manipulate. Now one sign of robust crown design is the play in the stem and I'm glad to report that this one really feels sturdy in whatever position the crown is in. Here's some footage of the watch on my wrist. I have 7 inch wrists and the 10 millimeter case thickness coupled with the very lightweight quartz movement really makes it a very comfortable watch to wear. You probably noticed earlier that the lugs are 20 millimeters wide and uh, they are actually chopped at the end so they're a little bit shorter and square. So uh, that squared lug look works very well on the wrist in my opinion. Adjusting the crown is a piece of cake and easily adjust that large crown with the watch on your wrist. Overall, this is a very competent feel design. Now compared to the Weekender, in a way it sort of is a matter of your taste and your wrist size. The Weekender is a more uh, traditional or heritage size. The Scout is definitely a larger, more modern size of 40 millimeters. Now I think that the Expedition Scout utilizes the space in the dial just as effectively as the Weekender and I prefer the overall shape of the case. And here's just the footage side by side if you're interested in seeing how they they wear. I would say definitely the Expedition wears larger, but the difference is, in terms of comfort, minimal. Normally a strap at this price point deserves to be replaced immediately with some decent leather strap, but the fabric pseudo canvas strap is actually breaking in pretty nicely and uh, does have a branded buckle. It's decent enough. As I noted, the case back is a snap-on style, and that means removing it is very easy. You just pop it off, and what is revealed is, I believe, the same movement in the Timex Weekender with a larger movement spacer. This ensures that you're going to be able to replace the battery with very common batteries and easily service the watch. One nice little touch, Timex did actually put some lume on the hands. It looks pretty weak, honestly, and so I would always end up using the indigo function if I needed to check this watch's time at night. Okay, so what are the pros and cons of the Timex Expedition Scout in summary? Well, pluses. You've got a great design, field-inspired, well-executed, lots of nice touches, and it's... Also, in a very affordable package, you're talking about $30 or $40. And how would I ding this watch? Well, first of all, I'm not a huge fan of the brass and then plated construction that's so common to these Timexes. They typically show wear in a way that's much less attractive than an actual stainless steel case. They'll just chip. Secondly, the actual analog quartz movement is very basic and actually fairly loud too. It isn't quite as loud in this watch as it is in the Weekender, which is extremely loud, but it's kind of annoying. And then lastly, the style, even though it's generally from a strong military design, it's derivative and, as I think I demonstrated, doesn't really have a strong historical precedent in Timex's design heritage. One last quirk, the quick set date in this movement is notoriously hard to set and I really am not able to set it actually with this watch very easily at all. So make sure you check your watch to make sure you can set that movement correctly when you're buying your watch. But overall I can give this watch a very solid thumbs up because this is a true heritage inspired design at an extraordinarily affordable price point you are getting a, a truly well-designed watch for the cost of most watch straps in higher-end watch collecting. And I really think that's remarkable. And 
along with that great design, you're getting a great size. 40 millimeters, in my opinion, is almost the ideal case size. And given the way that Rolex and Tudor have been making their similar sports watches, I think that 40 millimeters is going to remain a popular size. I want to thank you for watching this video. Please consider subscribing if you'd like to see more watch and gear related content and please feel free to check out some of my other videos that are linked in this end card.